A favorite quote of mine by an unknown author states, open quote, you cannot always choose what you do, but you can always choose who you are, end quote. Hello everyone, my name is Gavin Lee, and today I will be talking about the Sapper culture. The Sapper culture is a subculture in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in, mainly found in two cities, the city of Kinshasa and Brazzaville. So the sappers are a group of people who don on themselves flamboyant old dandyism suits that are colorized. You know, the old, old dandyism suits, meaning like, you know, the suits that Americans wore back in the early 1900s, you know, during the roaring 20s with their fedoras and their, you know, fancy suits. These are what the sappers wear, too. And the thing is, though, like, even though they look like businessmen, they're actually regular everyday people. You know, taxi drivers, shoemakers, grave diggers, just everyday people in their country. But they don on these suits to give them power, a sense of power. And, you know, the, these suits, if you look through their history, which we will discuss later on, you know, they will show you the resiliency that it has given them and the, how powerful the suits are a symbol of the, the power, the powerful symbols that the suits are. And in this talk, in this cultural, um, in this presentation, I'll be going over the history of the sappers, the current events that they're suffering today and why we don't know about them. And then we'll tie in how we as an American society can learn from the sapper culture. So starting off with the history, um, sapper the sappers are, like I said, part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, which started back in 1891 when the French colonized that area. And then in 1920, um, the, there was a civil war and the people were able to overthrow the French, get them out of there. And then they were able to take control. And there was a new presidency in result of it. Named, and President Sezo. Um, did not like westernized clothing. He wanted to uphold the traditional clothing according to Gennel un at university.edu. He wanted to uphold the traditional clothing and he wanted to um, get rid of westernized clothing. However, the sappers didn't. So they would continue to dress and therefore Sezo would order for them to get punished by getting beaten up on the streets you know, trying to discriminate them as much as he can because he saw it as a threat to his presidency. And the, honestly, the sappers kind of embraced it. They saw they began wearing it as a defiance to his reign because they didn't like him just saying that they couldn't, you know, uphold their tradition. Fast forward to the 1960s, according to Elizabeth Gordon at ExtraordinaryJourneys.com. Um, the sapper movement really began to take off. 1970s, the women joined in. They wanted to wear these suits. They wanted to join in with the men and allow these suits to empower them. And then we flash forward to today, you know, in 2010, the president, the newly elected president, Nguessa, approves of it. And today, the sapper culture is able to express themselves freely in, you know, cultural events in Kinshasa and... Brazzaville. Now, this history is important because it shows you one, the, despite the restrictions that were put on them, they did not back down from what they stood, they believed in. They, they, these suits meant a lot to them. You know, it gave them a sense of power, and you know they were willing to wear it as a sense of defiance. And you know, they they really wanted to stand for what they believed in, and they loved these suits. They wanted these suits represented who they were. And they weren't going to let anybody tell them otherwise. And so their long history shows that they were willing to fight. And, you know, it's a cause that they dedicate their lives to because they, you know, these suits are part of who they are as human beings. And so that that is why it's important to learn their history and it gives us context of their suits more. Current events going on, CBSNews.com reported that a power poll um, fell over, electrocuted 26 people in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, no specific city listed, but 26 people were electrocuted, as I said. BBCnews.com reported that now more children in more children in Kinshasa are beginning to don these suits. And 
um, becoming more recognized by the people in the cities and becoming drawing more attention to themselves so that it can become more widespread, the sapper culture. And then uh, Yahoo.com reported that Uganda, who went to war with the Democratic Republic of Congo, owes the Democratic Republic of Congo $325 million, according to the UN. Um, the UN is forcing them to pay that much because Uganda caused $11 billion of damage during that war. As I said, 1998 to 2003 was when that war took place. New Business Ethiopia dot com reports that a new artificial intelligence uh, research center is built in Africa, the first of its kind in Africa, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, specifically that area. And it's the first of its kind. It's supposed to pioneer helping um, the Congonese and others, you know, learn how to become leaders and learn how to go on with the digital innovations going on in society. And why we haven't heard about them, uh, I, I think it's just due to the lack of popularity the Democratic Republic of Congo is. I honestly knew nothing about them. And so I think it's just due to their lack of, you know, familiarity with everybody that we haven't learned about them. And, uh, you know, we we are more focused on our own selves than what's going around the other world. So I think that also contributes to it. But we can learn from this culture that as I was going back to the themes that, that we learned from the history, we can improve ourselves by learning from this culture is to stand for what we believe in. Don't let others dictate what we do. Do not fall. We don't have to follow the societal norm. Just follow what you believe in and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I think is the big thing. We choose who we are going back to that quote earlier. And I think that's what the Sapper history shows us. That's what everything that they're going through shows us. And so I think we need to just stay true to ourselves. I think that's what the Sapper culture can really teach us. And that's something we can apply to today's society as we kind of have more societal norms. But it's okay to, you know, don, don our own things. It's okay to stand out. And the Sappers have pioneered that a little bit. Um, and so in conclusion, you know, despite the terrible history that they've gone through, despite the terrible events going around, you know, they, they symbolize pow empowerment hope for themselves and who they are as a culture and it's something that we can learn as you know we we get to choose who we are and we can learn that from them by choosing who we are today and so learning just to accept who we are and stand for what we believe in from the sappers i thank you for listening to me and i hope you have an awesome day thank you